Okay, so you're driving down the road and you see serious congestion up ahead at an intersection and you think to yourself, why did they put a traffic signal here and not a roundabout or vice versa? Well, this is precisely what we will get into in this video. Well, hello there. My name is Kyle and welcome to Trafenge, where we talk about traffic engineering, transportation planning, public transport, the very road networks you drive on, new technologies in the transportation space and anything to do with the movement of goods or people. In this video, we're going to explore the age old question of a roundabout or a traffic signal. And there's a lot of material out there on this topic. So some of this stuff will be a refresher but we will go into a bit more detail. Let's jump straight into the top 10 design factors of the type of intersection engineers will go for and use these to look deeper into the decision-making process between a roundabout and a traffic signal. Number one, traffic flow and efficiency. While this aspect is first in this list and probably critical in most cases, it is not necessarily the most important. There are two main issues here. One is capacity. That is, how many vehicles in the peak hour can the intersection handle? Secondly, what does this traffic demand look like? Where are the vehicles going to and where are they coming from? The second point is particularly important for the implementation of roundabouts. And we can explore that shortly. Typically, intersection designers will simulate the intersection with a software tool and then determine the performance of the intersection. Let's look at a high traffic demand two lane approach intersection and with some computer software magic, I can relatively quickly simulate these two intersections. This one is signalized and as you can see, it's working pretty well. The traffic demand is fairly high and the signal plan is also designed for this particular traffic demand. Now, with the exact same traffic demand, let's see what it looks like for a roundabout. Hmm, we can already see an issue here. The issue with roundabouts is that the traffic demand needs to be balanced. What this means is, if we have a very high traffic demand on one approach and a low demand on other approaches, we run into issues. This is one of the drawbacks of the roundabout. On the other hand, if the traffic demand is fairly high on all approaches, but relatively balanced, then the roundabout would be the preferred option because a signal plan has to try and balance green time amongst all these approaches plus it includes an all red phase in the signal plan so it gets pretty inefficient number two access spacing and queuing space this is probably one that is overlooked when designing an intersection in isolation but another defining difference between roundabouts and signalized intersections are the queue lengths. Because signals turn red, vehicles stop and a queue is caused. This queue can extend for quite a bit before the green phase kicks in. This queue can impact other intersections and property accesses upstream of the intersection. Let's take a look again at the two intersections I created. This time I've added an additional intersection and property access. For the roundabout, there's very little queuing. There isn't anything to worry about really. But for the signalized intersection, we see a real issue here. The other intersection and property access are now congested. City officials know this very well because they get all the complaints after an intersection is built. As such, they are planning documents that govern the minimum distances between intersections and depending on where you live these do vary but typically the minimum distance between roundabouts 
are shorter than for signalized intersections. If the access spacing is too short, road authorities will reject the designer's proposal for a type of intersection, regardless of how efficient it may be. Number three, traffic safety. Firstly, a roundabout is a traffic calming measure, meaning vehicles have to slow down to navigate the intersection. We have all seen those videos on a signalized intersection showing high speed T-bone collisions. These are very, very rare at roundabouts because vehicles have to slow down and they have to change their directions to navigate through. And when there is an accident, because it's at low speed, it's significantly less fatal. There have been so many studies confirming this, but one particular piece of material that stands out for me is from the World Economic Forum, which concludes that there is a 90% reduction in fatalities, 76% fewer injuries, and about 30 to 40% less accidents involving pedestrians. However, these safety benefits are only realized if the roundabout has been designed correctly and is not confusing. There are so many examples out there of bad roundabout designs, and this is especially the case when considering pedestrian movement, which requires crossing locations to be placed correctly, otherwise roundabouts could be more hazardous than a signalized intersection. Here's one example of a bad roundabout. You can see a center island, but it was simply placed in the middle of what appears to be a four-way stop intersection. There's no delineation for vehicles. This is curbing and painted islands that guides vehicles through the roundabout at a good angle. We don't see any roundabout signage, and for some reason, there are stop road markings. And here's a little bonus clip to show you that it doesn't matter how good you design an intersection, there will always be reckless drivers. Number four, space availability and terrain issues. This one is pretty obvious, but still needs to be mentioned. Roundabouts take up more space. If in an urban setting with limited space, a roundabout would not be so suitable. And don't think you can just reduce the size of the center island. This size is directly related to the operational performance. Making it smaller to squeeze it in will definitely reduce its effectiveness. Then for a roundabout, it's preferred that the terrain be flat. This is to avoid a myriad of issues such as rainfall, drainage and site distance issues. Number five, cost and environmental. Depending on the size of the roundabout, the initial construction cost might be similar or more than a signalized intersection. However, looking at the long-term cost, traffic signals require electricity, maintenance, repairs, and signal plan management, all of which increases the cost of the lifetime of the intersection, significantly more than a roundabout, which probably just requires a repainted road marking and vegetation to be cut back. Then, on the environmental side, the consistent energy required by traffic signals, combined with the fact that vehicles are stopped and idling, slowly spewing out emissions, means that there's also an environmental cost to a signalized intersection. Number six, road hierarchy and operating speed. 
This aspect goes hand in hand with access spacing. As access spacing is governed by road classification, highways versus local streets. You will only in rare cases find a roundabout on a high speed roadway because the very nature of a roundabout is traffic calming and a highway encourages mobility over local access. This may be an extreme example, but depending on the type of road the intersection is on, one intersection type is more suited than another. And some other intersection types are just simply not allowed due to regulations. Number seven. Public transport. Many countries have implemented advanced public transport services such as bus rapid transit and trams. These are usually prioritized over private vehicle traffic with dedicated lanes and signal phases. And as such, it is difficult to give them right of way at a roundabout, which generally involves mixed public transport and private vehicle traffic yielding and trying to navigate through congested roads together. As a consequence, road authorities end up signalizing roundabouts and in some cases splitting the roundabout completely. This is not ideal because the efficiency of the roundabout is then lost and it ends up being a messy signalized gyratory rather than a roundabout. This usually happens when an existing roundabout is retrofitted for the implementation of a new public transport service. Number eight, driver behavior. Another aspect that is sometimes overlooked and is the number one reason why there are so many roundabouts in the UK and are so rare in the US. It doesn't matter if you have designed the perfect roundabout that is super efficient, but ends up bringing about pandemonium through driver confusion or motorists that break the rules. The same goes for traffic signals. If a traffic signal intersection is notorious for motorists running red lights or sneaking a left or right while another phase is running, this can prompt road authorities to change the intersection control to a roundabout, for example, purely for traffic safety. Number nine, aesthetics. Yes, artistic value. Many private developers want to maximize the value of development that they are planning. And one way to do this is to have a prominent gateway access to the development. A roundabout with a statue or a fountain in the center island makes a bold statement compared to a set of traffic lights. Number 10 state or city preferences and politics. Sometimes politics does get muddled up in the design of an intersection. Promises are sometimes made and designers are forced to make it work. Regardless if a roundabout or a signalized intersection is better, it does happen that these decisions come from the top. So you may see an intersection and think, why didn't they build a signalized intersection or a roundabout here? What were the engineers thinking? Well, sometimes it's just not up to them. So, in conclusion then, and contrary to popular opinion, there actually isn't a clear winner between the two in all cases. And this is probably the most important point in this video. Each intersection is unique in all aspects, and each intersection should be designed in context. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, leave a like and a comment. I'll be uploading more interesting videos in time, so click on that notifications bell so you know when I've released another. If you have any topics you would like to see discussed in more detail, let me know and I'll see if I can make it happen. Bye for now.